Hello, this is Mark here at Gary's Guitars in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and I'm here to talk about Made in Japan guitars. I started making this video, and it's like got overwhelming, and I just started uh, um, I started thinking about all the all the things to talk about the Japanese instrument making and the history and all that stuff, and it's just such a huge topic. It's gonna have to get divided up. But I decided the way to present today's topic is to talk about these instruments here behind me, where they fit in the Made in Japan heritage and um, what that means. So, uh, just kind of briefly, post-war Japan became industrialized and uh, a lot of American companies uh, switched to Japanese production to save money because their economy you know, was, was, was so uh, down from ours that things could be made cheaply. The same thing that America did later in Korea and later in Indonesia and later in China, taking, um, taking advantage of Markets were in Vietnam and India, taking taking advantage of markets where labor is cheap to make their things and then sell them in the U.S. Japan was the first country to really do that. And then, also the first country to take all they learned about American manufacturing and take it further. So, by the mid to late 70s, they were making great guitars. They were also making great cars. They made great stereos. Um, everything they made just got better and better, um, and uh, then became to, a, a direct competitor to the American companies that were having things made in Japan just to save some money and have a cheaper line. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, well, we'll talk once again. We're going to try to do this. Um, let the guitars tell the story. So, a Telestar. This bass. Um, is kind of what we we like to call the Taisco or the um, Norma type of uh, Japanese instruments. They were kind of noticeably not as great as the American um, uh, analogs. Uh, when American companies like K, Dan Electro, and Harmony started to kind of wane in their ability to make these inexpensive instruments, or maybe because Japanese production became a thing these American companies suffered. Anyways, there was the Made in America cheap guitars going this way, Made in Japan going this way. So, Made in Japan became a, a big thing for department stores that, you know, that before carried down electro uh, branded Silvertone guitars or Airline and things like that. Began to switch to Japanese production. Those stencil marks, like we're saying Norma and, 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 and Taisco and, um, oh, there's a, a bunch of names for them I'm not remembering, but um, an American company would buy a thousand of these things, they'd get their name printed on it, they would mark it and sell it. Um, these are really cool instruments. They have, um, right now, the, um, those, uh, what, the, what, the gold foil pickup craze, and uh, these instruments had always sounded cool and, um, and had an interesting feel to them. They were never expensive until recently, um, but now they're getting a little more, um, little more respect. And the bass is kind of cool because bass doesn't have to be so precise, I think. Um, well, I'm going to get some hate mail for that. But um, the same thing I said about Soviet basses recently or you know Eastern European basses. If you're just a little out of tune, you can kind of bend it a little. You're playing one note at a time. You're not strumming six strings. Um, anyways, uh, they cheaped out in the pickups a little. And that brings us to our next, oops, our next phase, which is this side. Over here, the Cortez. This Cortez guitar is represents what we call the lawsuit guitars. Now, there are no actual lawsuits that you can find when you Google it. But this idea of either threatening a lawsuit or making some deal with these Japanese companies that, were, that began making reproductions so well, they threatened the American market. And this obviously looks like a Gibson 175, and it plays super nicely. Um, at this time, the only thing that these companies would cheap out on a little are, are once again, the pickups. Um, or the, uh, and this includes, uh, like the, I had a Vantage guitar, which was also an 80s guitar, but still, like, you put good pickups in those things, and they just, ooh, they are sweet. Ibanez at this time, this kind of looks like, the reason it's called a Cortez is because of Ibanez and Alvarez Yari. Uh, so um, 
they took on Spanish names because Spanish guitars had a great reputation, at least in Japan. Uh, Yari actually bought an Alvarez company and became Alvarez Yari. And then Alvarez, and the same thing with Ibanez, and the same thing here with Cortez. Uh, having a Spanish name would give them a little international uh, cachet in the guitar manufacturing world. So, let's keep moving. Uh, let's look at this Memphis bass. This Memphis bass is here to represent um, the late 70s, early 80s Japanese-made instruments when they competed directly with the American Gibson and Fender. Um, so, like I said, you had kind of the lawsuit era thing that crossed over a little bit, and some people would go to a store and they try out the Fender and they try out the Kramer and they end up buying the Kramer. Um, this is also, uh, and of course, this like the Memphis, very inexpensive instrument too. Some people bought them because it's the only thing they could afford. Some things like, uh, let's say that the uh, people like Eddie Van Halen were taking their Fender guitars and experimenting with them. And um, people would like file down the frets, make them super flat, but like super level, and then they could get their strings super low, and those wide, those super low wide frets, and they could shred like crazy. And that's the and then Kramer came along and did that, and Ibanez, they became these race car guitars, and they they briefly left Fender and Gibson in the dust because that became what American guitarists wanted. I want a guitar I can shred on, and these Japanese made guitars um, did great for a while. Then Fender decided, um, well, so Gibson did Japanese production in the 70s. They moved their Epiphone production to Japan. They made it a noticeable um, quality um, cut for a little while at least. Um, but these, the Japanese made Epiphones are great as well. Um, so we're here we oh, cause, oh, the other thing I want to mention about this uh, Memphis is we had the Fender made, uh, the, the made in Japan Fenders came around in the early 80s. And then also notably, um, the, uh, Honer, the Japanese instrument manufacturer, also uh, made a line of um, made in Japan guitars, uh, sold guitars made in Japan worldwide. Why is this important? Because a guy named Prince got one for, uh, his dad helped him, uh, bought one at, you know, like a junk store kind of place. Uh, I think he said a gas station, but I don't know exactly uh, if it's literally a gas station or just a um, just a store that would have a variety of th a variety store kind of thing. Anyways, why do I mention this? Because this kind of fits into this with the Memphis, made in Japan. Um, also scaled down. This me this Memphis looks like a Fender bass, but it's a 32 inch scale length. I believe that a lot of these American companies that are commissioning uh, Japanese-made instruments actually commission them to be a little smaller, um, like 7 eighths. That way they wouldn't directly... My, my main Japan Fender is a 32-inch scale length as well. That way they wouldn't directly compete with the Made in the USA instrument as much. And the, the uh, Honer Made in Japan instruments fit this 7th eighth scale length. Um, and so Prince's Honer uh, Telecaster, which was his favorite guitar throughout his career, was just a little smaller than a regular Telecaster. That may be why he liked it. I believe, according to his tailor, he was five. According to his driver's license, he was five three. According to his tailor, he was five one. I think that's what I read. Um, but not um, not the biggest guy around, and he just liked that slightly shorter scale length. Let's move on to this other Fender here. Um, sorry, this actual Fender made in Japan. This is the Fender uh, Precision Bass Light. This is the late 80s, early 90s. So in the 80s, Fender uh, lost their American production facility. There was the employee buyout, and then the, uh, and, uh, the new owners were left without a production facility. And because they already had done some business in Japan, because uh, William Schultz was a... A Yamaha executive at one point it was just a natural thing to turn to Japan and try to get their uh, guitars made there and I believe for about a year and a half every Fender was made in Japan and they just started making some of them in the US and building up the US production but these Japanese reissue guitars they made in the early 80s and the made in Japan uh, um, Fenders are kind of legendary so they continue to do business with the joint company they formed with the Fuji company um, so they made this other joint company in Japan that would 
sell that they would make the, the fenders in Japan and sell them to a Japanese market and make select fenders for the US market. And this fits under that umbrella. And they also did some of their little you know, slightly more experimental. This, you know, you know, where there would be active pickups or this is a PJ setup with a smaller body. This is called the Fender Precision Base Light L Y T E. Um and uh, I have a made in Japan uh, Fender bass uh, from the late 80s, like I said. Um, but also, uh, made in Japan Telecasters to this day are pretty cool if you run across them. Uh, Fender still, up until a year ago at least, when all this uh, supply chain stuff started happening, Fender still made uh, Japanese uh, instruments branded Fender. And uh, they're great quality. So. That's it for right now. I know I didn't talk about Yamaha Red Label. I didn't talk about so much stuff, and we'll just have to do that in other videos. Um, so, um, the Made in Japan story actually continues, uh, and now some of the Japanese manufacturers like Tokai are making their guitars in, just like the American companies commissioned uh, the Japanese makers to make them and sell them in America, uh, Tokai... Uh, has their guitars made in China and brings them to Japan and sets them up or something according to them and then sends them to the US so they they are actually doing what the US did in the 70s with Japan but with another manufacturing country but there's all there's still great uh, made in Japan manufacturing going Yamaha has made in Japan guitars still Fender like I said um, and they're great instruments um, and Japanese manufacturing in general is, is great if you've ever owned a Japanese car um, then uh, you'll know, you'll, you'll probably agree with me. And Japanese guitars are just good. So, once again, this is Gary's Guitars. Um, I should say all the stuff at the beginning because you should subscribe to YouTube. You should check out our live thing on YouTube. You should Instagram and Facebook and all that just so we can be in contact. And uh, thanks for watching.